So what we have here is a list of materials that we're going to need to use to make our anti-gravity device. First of all, first off, specifications, very important. Okay. Measuring devices, because we need to cut and manufacture so this, this device. Okay. We've got 30 gauge copper magnet wire. It has a small plastic coating on it that we'll have to uh, scrape off with an X-Acto knife. So keep those close together. We've got balsa wood. Okay, we're going to have to cut this in half to make a frame. So this frame is going to support a cathode and anode. For the uh, this will be the anode, and the cathode will be created by aluminum foil. Alum aluminum is very important in this entire experiment because it attracts negative, negatively charged ions, which will pass from the highly charged copper wire to the negative ions okay, of the aluminum foil. We'll also need some crazy glue. I also use some wood glue, some scotch tape, a needle and thread, because there is some delicate work uh, done as well. So what we're going to do is use the balsa wood to create a triangular frame with struts going across. We're going to, at the top of the frame, use the magnet wire, the copper magnet wire, to create a similar type of triangle at the very top, made out of wire. We'll take the aluminum foil and cover the base of our lifter design with aluminum foil. This section, the copper wire is attached to the positive charge, the negative charge is attached to the aluminum foil. Upon high voltage, what we'll likely experience because of some of the inefficiencies of energy transfer is a blue corona in between the two. And that will let us know that the air molecules are being electrically charged and creating negative ions. And if that is the case, then the aluminum foil will attract the negative ions and will have what's called the ion wind effect, which will elevate or provide some propulsion mechanism. So here we are with the balsa frame all ready and glued. Our next step is to attach the aluminum foil along the base of the struts. So we've just finished attaching the aluminum foil to the struts and we had to use some scotch tape and tape over the one centimeter lip. Uh, lip. Our next step is to poke a hole into the aluminum foil at one of the corners and attach our ground wire. We've just finished up with the top corona wire which will attach to one of the grounds and the other one here. So here we are, we've got our ground wire, which we've attached to the inside of the monitor, and the positive wire to the base of this, uh, of the monitor tube itself. So we've also put up a small wall barrier here, and poked holes through it, and we've looped both wires through those holes. Now this will help ensure that the wires won't cross when we experience some propulsion. We've also tethered down the three corners of our lifter so when it raises it'll go like that. 
Test number three. Ooh, I heard something. I hear it. Yeah. I hear it. I hear it too. That's cool. Where's the light switch? It's right back here. Ready? Okay, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Turn it off. I can see some corona. I can see blue corona. So Randy, why don't you tell us about the adjustments you've made to the model? Well, what we have done is uh, replace the copper wire and the tin foil to increase some efficiencies. In our earlier model, the aluminum foil that we used was heavy duty, so we've replaced that with the uh, very thin aluminum foil, which should cut down on weight. We've also replaced the heavy copper wire with, this is the 30 gauge, I had made that mistake earlier, I thought that the uh, heavier copper wire, copper wire was 30 gauge. We also, um, with the wire, took careful detail to scrape the underneath underside of the wire to expose the copper so we're hoping for a better connection. Okay, kill the light. Yeah, they're thrown all the way around. Yeah. Really good.
Whoa, I was really getting wild there. That is uh, great.